Hey guys, welcome back to another DIY video here on our channel, Justin and Jess. Uh, Jess is behind the camera. Come here, Jess. I'm here. She's here. <laughs> this is the quarter close for her job, so she's not going to be very involved. I will be uninvolved. Uninvolved in this uninvolved. video. Uninvolved. It's she's, all Justin. It's all me. Uh, today, we're going to show you how to turn this little uh, cookie, that's what you call it, cookie wood slab. cookie slab that we cut from our massive tree back there into this beautiful DIY side table. So this piece of wood has been sitting out to dry for about a month now. Over a month. Over a month? Over a month. We've changed our drying process a little bit. So we've got a lot more cookies drying out the proper way, but this way was just kind of a test way. And there is some bug activity. I don't know if you can see him anymore. There's one right there. Well, something, something. That little booger. Get him. So we're gonna spray it with this vinegar. Is that a water vinegar mixture? It's just straight up vinegar. Straight up vinegar. I was gonna spray it on here. We're gonna router it down. I don't know that this is gonna do much, but I researched it. You're supposed to technically do this when you dry the pieces out if you see any bug activity, but this will be fine for now. It's not soaking it super hard. Well, it's not getting it super wet, so see if it works. All right, so technically this is the second uh, cookie slab, side table, whatever you want to call it. This is the second one that we've made. And so we got to do kind of a practice run with uh, one piece and just kind of see how it goes and what we wanted to do with it, learn from, some ex some, learn from our mistakes. But after we sprayed down the cookie slab with some vinegar, just kind of kill off some of those bugs, we're gonna move into getting rid of this bark. This is an optional thing. If you wanna keep the bark on there, you can. For us, we wanted to clean this up uh, so as to make it look incredibly smooth. And also, sorry about the autofocus in this section. I, I did not set it to manual, and so it's continually uh, focusing on my arm, armpit and not the cookie slab. We're just using uh, just a mallet and uh, a chisel for this. It's very simple. The bark comes off pretty easily uh, using this method. After I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in a plastic bag. I'm gonna keep these for later, just as you can use these to, uh, to grill with if you want. You can use these in, uh, in your fire if you wanna do, use it, use it as like a fire starter. I think that's what we're gonna use it for later on. Next step is to begin the routering process. Now, one thing to know, and if you watch other videos, the most important thing is to make sure that you have a flat and level surface. And so I, I know that the workbench that I'm using is not level to the ground, but this cookie slab is gonna be level to that workbench. And so that's okay. Whatever surface you're using, just make sure that it's flat and level to that surface. So we'll set up my, my DIY uh, router rig, which you can check out that video. I'll link that in the corner on how we made that. Uh, there are still some more improvements that I want to make to this, uh, this router sled just to kind of help the efficiency. I'd love to put like a stop block on the end of it. Um, and then I'm trying to figure out a, a different way to clamp it to the table just to secure this cookie slab. And I'm kind of working through a few different uh, varieties of, of how to keep it it's stable. As you can see, I decided to put a straight edge on the back side of the workbench and just uh, have a clamp there so it would stay in place. Knowing that I'm, I'm moving forward with the sled, it's gonna wanna put, push those one by twos uh, forward. So that's kind of a good stop there. When routering like this, uh, what I've learned is just take it in slow sections, as slow as you can go, um, and just, just take your time with it, no rush. Um, whatever feels most comfortable for you. You don't want to rush this process. And as you can see, doing this is, is a very messy job. <laughs> there is a lot of, there are a lot of wood chips that are produced from routering uh, this piece of wood. 
So as you can see, that method just, it wasn't working for me. And so this method is a little bit different. I just turned it around so that the sled goes side to side instead of forwards and backwards. And uh, this works out a lot better for me. And as you can tell, the wood chips are now coming out to the side instead of right on top of me. And there you have it. You can see our lines from where the router bit has gone across it. Uh, don't worry about that at all. Those will be able to sand down. So I went over each side about three to four times and got the thickness of the cookie slab to about an inch and a quarter. And as you can see underneath there, I had to put a couple of shims. And you can see how much of the wood chips it produces. A very important thing to do is to make sure you're keeping your, your workstation clean so that the wood chips are not getting in the way of the router bit or in the the motion of the router itself on the sled. All right, so we're done with the routering portion here. Um, hopefully you can hear me over the fan. I'm not turning it off because it's really hot out here. But um, yeah, I had to add this uh, plywood, little three quarters inch plywood help shim it up um, and then also these little breakers here to help secure it and as you can see uh, there is a constant barrage of just sawdust going everywhere and so I was able to vacuum up most of it but most of it just lands over here so I'll have to, I'll have to take care of that shortly but uh, the next thing to do is to sand it down try to get rid of some of these lines I did mess up at a couple of spots it does still feel a little bowed in the middle, but not not too much. This is going to be my top side anyways, because I, I messed up on, on this side right here. There's a couple of burn marks from the, the router bit, uh, but I, I might be able to sand some of that down. Uh, it just got ahead of me right here and messed it up. But this is going to be my bottom side anyways. But other than that, it's pretty much perfect. I, I measured both all four sides of it and it's about an inch and a quarter just one mark above an inch, inch and a quarter I don't know what that measurement is but I think we're done routering it that was about maybe like two or three passes on each side uh, just to really get some of the uneven levels from the chainsaw down and then actually start trying to level it out because you want to take your time you want to do a little bit at a time and not too much so yeah now it's time to sand this bad boy starting out i'm just going to use 40 and then work my way up to 80 120 and so on and so forth just with sanding down uh, this piece of wood i want to keep it um, as simple as possible another trick that i've learned is to make pencil marks on the wood so that you'll be able to to know where you've actually sanded and keep it very even across the cookie slab and as you can see sanding it down does get rid of those pencil marks so you don't have to worry about that the sanding process is pretty involved it does take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to be able to get some of these spots super smooth um, but I would just do it based on feel. That's the way that I did it, whatever really felt right. I got it to the smoothness that I wanted. I wanted to make sure that I flattened out some of those beveled edges and some of those imperfections that were caused by the router bit. Um, but one side, this side in particular, was I knew it was gonna be the bottom. There were some burn marks from the router bit. And so I wasn't as concerned with this side and making it smooth as I was the, the top side. But from there, we're just going to continue to go up in size on the sandpaper and just continue sanding this thing down. After I got things completed, uh, there are a few cracks in this slab in particular. I don't think it's wide enough to where we need to put any sort of connector, like a wood connector. You've seen those, those bow ties or diamonds or whatever that'll connect the, the split pieces. Uh, we don't think it's uh, that bad that we need that. Um, but being careful, I'm gonna take just a, a wood carver here and dig out some of those uh, pieces that are, that are sticking out and sticking up. And 
then just an easy way to get rid of some of those as well is just to use uh, sandpaper by hand. So I just folded an old piece here and, and went into the crevices of these cracks and, and got out what I could get. There I wanted to take my wood chisel and just go back around the sides of the cookie slab and level everything out just to make sure it looks nice and clean. And the best way to do that is just by eye. I just look vertically down and scrape off anything that doesn't look pleasing or level. there we're going to continue the sanding process but on the sides and I believe I used a, two, a 120 or a 220 240 uh, grit size for this one I, I didn't want to uh, start that low like I did on the tops I really wanted to just dive in here and get this taken care of the most important thing here is just just flattening out any of those sides that that might have like little splinters sticking out and getting rid of those to give it a nice clean and smooth finish Just like that, we have our routered and sanded cookie slab uh, side table ready for some nice polyurethane. So this is where Jess is going to take over. We're just going to coat the top and the sides for right now and let that dry. Give it a few hours to sit in and then we're going to come back out and we'll sand it down and then repeat that process a couple of more times. Just applying a fresh coat of polyurethane, letting it dry, sanding it down a little bit, and then just repeating that process a few times. Okay, so uh, it's a new day and we've had to let this dry um, we've put one coat on it, one coat of polyurethane that showed you earlier, just a clear satin polyurethane. Did one coat and then sanded that down uh, just on the top side and the, and the sides. And then I believe we did it once or twice more. I just did that, so I'm not sure. So she wants me to do a coat on the bottom now to finish it off. Grab one of these paint brushes that we used earlier. That one's pretty good. I just want it to, I just need to move it around. Well, that probably is going to be good. And then there's no magic trick. There's no technique that I'm aware of, of putting on polyurethane. You just, you just do it. <laughs> uh, the bubbles will take care of themselves. You can kind of blow on them or move them around like that. And that's usually going to be just fine and as you can see like right there that's still kind of showing that mistake from earlier but I'm putting the legs this is the bottom I'm gonna put the legs on this side so it's not really gonna make too much of a difference but I think that looks pretty good there are some spots right here just some little um, bubbly spots from where some of the polyurethane uh, seeped underneath it so we'll get rid of that here in a little bit I'll just do a light sand for that and then after that we'll put the the legs on it and we'll be done and now it's time for our leg assembly for this uh, we got these legs off of Amazon I'll link that below I think it was about $25 for these and uh, they come in a pack of four they come with screws already uh, with it so you don't have to worry about buying any screws a couple of ways that we could do this the first way um, we could pre-drill our holes if I really wanted to do that say I was shipping this piece of furniture I would want to pre-drill the holes and then just it would have a little bit of assembly required for the customer but the way we're gonna do it we're just gonna go ahead and screw straight into the piece of wood I'm not worried about cracking or anything like that these are very small screws less than an inch in length and so I'm not too concerned with with pre-drilling on this piece of wood 
when it comes to setting up the legs uh, we didn't really put too much thought into it we only wanted to use three we knew that um, but really just kind of what looked the best in terms of its spacing and just as a really good eye for that and so we just set them up where it kind of looked like a triangle and just began to put the screws in and then to actually get the screws in there, I started with an impact driver and then tightened everything up with a screwdriver by hand. Just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to crack the wood or make any imperfections in the uh, actual frame of the, the, the legs. 